Hi everybody, Father Bill Holtzinger here, and this is your Friday Reflection. Well, right off the bat, um, I've been wearing a brace here, you can see that, wearing a brace, wearing a brace, yeah. Uh, and I've been wearing this brace for about a, almost two weeks now, and it's uh, because I have a trigger finger. Yeah, I don't want to actually move it much, because uh, what a basic trigger finger is, is there's a sheath that, let me back up. We have tendons that help us to open and close our hands, and those tendons go through like a tube or a sheath, and those tendons can get irritated and have like a nodule, kind of like a, a knuckle on my finger, but then if it goes through a sheath, it kind of bumps against that, and that causes it to not always go one way or another, kind of gets to a spot that kind of sticks. And it's not a big deal, but eventually it kind of gets kind of a pain in the rear end, uh, but also can get painful. So I've already had this once before, maybe mm, about five, five years ago or so, and I had to have a cortisone shot in my the palm of my hand. Actually, it was this one here because now it's back. And interestingly enough, you can buy these things at the regular store. Obviously, trigger finger or needed to immobilize thumb is rather popular. Uh, but nonetheless, so the goal at this point is to wear this as much as I can. I don't do it during liturgy. It's rather distracting. But otherwise, in meetings and such, I'll not wear it so that it, or I will wear it so that the um, finger doesn't move as much and hopefully the inflammation will go down and it will be fine. Now, <clears throat> when I had this situation once before, I went online and I looked up at the biology of, of the hand. You know, and if I wasn't a believer already, that would make me a believer. Because I look at the hand and the, the amazing complexity and actual beauty of the hand, all of the abilities for our hands to move as they do, it's just stunning to me. I'm like, how can that be random? It just doesn't even make sense to me. It seems like that would take more leap of faith to actually believe that randomness would create such a complex system, just a hand. So that was actually a religious moment for me, a faith-filled moment for me. Got the, the injection, and it was kind of like magic after that. I was able to move it. And I just need to be careful. And so I think recently I was moving something or cranking on something, and um, it uh, irritated the tendon, and so that's kind of coming back again. So I'm just kind of keeping it sta stabilized around less mobile. I'll even sleep with it so I don't actually just start bending it. and It's a little better, so we'll just see. See where it goes. So if you see me with this, uh, a lot of the kids in school are like, what did you do to your hand? I'd say I injured it. and It'll be fine. So that's what's going on. Well, this weekend, we are celebrating a couple things. Well, depending on when you watch this, the Titan Run is either about to happen, because it's supposed to be on Friday from, uh, let's say, uh, was it, 9 to... Let's see here. Where is it? Oh, yeah, it is. 10.30 to about noonish or so. And <clears throat> I'm going to go. And I hope that you've been able to support somebody in that regard, one of those kids, our kiddos. Uh, but after that, that's one thing. After that, we're going to have our uh, Solemnity of the Ascension of the Lord. It's interesting because we often hear about the death and resurrection of the Lord, but we often don't mention the Ascension of the Lord. So that's that three-part thing. Christ died, Christ rose and ascended into heaven. This, so by dying, he destroyed our death. By rising, he restored life. But then that means we're just hanging around here? No, see, but then he ascended so that our ultimate destiny is in heaven. When I was thinking about this a few years back, something that kind of blew my mind, and maybe it won't blow your mind like it's blown my mind, but I'm thinking heaven where God it reigns, the Trinity lives in harmony, there's the saints and angels, but I always kind of thought, okay, there's the people, and then there's God. But there's a, there's a person, actually three persons, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But amongst those, one is also human. So sitting on the right hand of the Father is the Son. I mean, if you can imagine, I'm trying to figure out how to imagine a throne in heaven, but for the moment, let's just say it's kind of a typical throne that we think about. And now Jesus is the right hand of the Father. He's glorified but he's also still human and divine. I used to think, well, he gives up his, his, his humanity when he gets to heaven because he doesn't need it. But no, the whole person who's Jesus now has been transformed because he's been made incarnate in time and ascends into eternity. So now in his person, humanity sits at the right hand of the Father. That's how much the Father loves us, that he wants to be so close to us that it wasn't even enough that he would be incarnated and living amongst us, that in the ultimate time, we would be living eternally 
of us in the flesh in heaven. Often we think of heaven as just we're non, well, we're spirited non-bodies or something of that nature. But we know that it's not the case. You know, the Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead, and Jesus did as well, that we'd be at the end time raised bodily somehow by God's grace and power to resurrection to eternity in heaven or hell. But either way, it's still we have our bodies back in some way. And I kind of like to think of it, I don't know about you, but I'd like to be like you know, 33 years old, maybe you know, about 10 pounds lighter, et cetera, et cetera, maybe six-pack abs, whatever. What would it be for you? I have no idea if we even get to choose. But nonetheless, it'll be recognizable because Jesus' body was recognizable, and yet he had a quality that did confound his apostles. He still had his wounds. He was able to peer in walls, or in rooms through walls, didn't open the door to get in. And he would surprise the, the apostles often. So something of that is what's going to happen for us, whatever that means. That's, that's like a new skill set. That's like a new part of being human, another level of, you say, a, an evolution of humanity to be able to be resurrected, in, and not just resurrected, but now living ascended into heaven. Anyhow, that just blows my mind that humanity, a human being, is in heaven at the right hand of the throne of God, the Father, in the person of Jesus Christ, who is human and divine. That's what we're celebrating. And Deacon Brett's going to be preaching, and he's getting ready for it. I pray for him, please, so you know, he can offer a good homily for all of us. So you kind of, you know, think about and ponder on and maybe even have some homework. And start thinking about also for next week, after that. After that will be the Feast of Pentecost. And that feast, or solemnity, will on that Saturday, that'll be Saturday the 18th, we'll be celebrating our international festival. And I hope you can come, because it's going to be amazing. I was there, uh, I think this will be my uh, second one. Let's see, 22, 23. Gosh, time's going by. Anyhow, whatever. So, it's going to be wonderful. I hope that you'll be able to come. There'll be lots of food. Come to Mass if you can on Saturday, and you can see the internationalness of our community. That will present, There'll be some people processing with banners, uh, symbolizing the different nations that are amongst us. We have well over 100, maybe even 200 languages and or dialects in our community. It's stunning. And we celebrate that. That's the day when Christ... We said Pentecost is the day then when Christ gave that gift of the Holy of the Holy Spirit to his apostles and they spoke languages that once were dispersed, now they can speak others, so that the languages that are dispersed now know the one faith. So now from that diversity that occurred from the Tower of Babel, that whole story, now have been unified in the language of love which God has given us through the Holy Spirit. I don't want to wax too much about that. That'll be next week. I hope you can come this weekend and, and just think about this thing, this, this reality. You don't hear about it much in other traditions. Uh, and even in our own, we don't speak about it much. We do have the solemnity of it. But the God the Father has put his Son, who is human and divine, at his right hand. It means humanity is there as well. That means that's how much God loves you, that he would be willing to have you sit in the person of Jesus as human next to him. So much to think about. I'll see you this weekend, and enjoy the weather. Boy, is this going to be nice. Uh, it's going to be in the 80s, or 70s, 80s, and uh, it's the beginning of, I think, now, that, that, that summer that's almost upon us, and I'll talk to you at Mass. God bless. Bye-bye.